Well, first and foremost, just want to show our appreciation to uh, University of Penn for allowing us to play this game and to Chelsea and, and our Penn State staff uh, for getting this organized, uh, running this game day today, and, and then thank you to all the, uh, the Penn State people that showed up. What, a, what an awesome atmosphere. What a special day for Penn State, Penn State basketball. And, these two guys and their teammates, uh, I, I'm really, really proud of them. Uh, what we went through the other day, the road trip, uh, I just told them if, if we don't deal with adversity and we don't get better at it, we're going to keep going through that. We saw some of that in the first half, and I just thought the guys, they were frustrated, uh, but they found a way to stay connected. And I just thought in the second half, we, uh, it was our best uh, half of defense this year against a good offensive team. I'm just really proud of, proud of our guys. It was a great team effort. Question for Ace Bottom. <coughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mike said you, you were probably frustrated. Did you sense that the lid was about to blow off this thing if you did got on any roll? And did that go through your mind in the second half? And then when it did. What would that sound like? Was there an energy that was palpable that you worked off of or not? Uh, most definitely we knew the way it would blow off this thing. We uh, did it before. Uh, we've been in this situation before. We're a tough team. Uh, we know we're capable of – I think in the first half we kind of got in our own way. Uh, we didn't make shots. We kind of turned the ball over. And uh, we knew if we turned it around in the second half, it was it was going to be crazy. So, so do you read it? I mean, this is a different place than what you usually play. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to lie. I wish we could play here every game. <laughs> I love it here. And Why? also, it's, it's the atmosphere. It's sold out. It's packed then. Carl was with us. Like, shout out to the fans. I just loved it. You've never been here, right? No, that's my first time, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's from B Baltimore. They don't come up this way. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Did you notice the, how the place is built and the, how the sound kind of? Yeah, and it went all the way to the top. What? The fans, it was all the way to the top. Like, yeah. no concourse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that means the fans in the corner. Uh, hey, well, your coach just said you're going to come up here. Ace, I watched Ace play <laughs> about nine or ten times. <laughs> going back to nine, ten, three. Oh, here we go with the Ace. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing them for years now. Here we go. Mark, are you ready? I've never seen a guy lose in Philly. I just mentioned it to him. You know, it's a really good team. It's, what, is it, what is it about coming up the road? It's only 90 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. Is it like a second home up here? You really get comfortable up here in Philly. Uh, yeah, like you said, it's like a second home up here. Uh, like I said, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, the fans, they brung the juice, and we just fed off them. Uh, I think we can handle it by uh, just standing together and, like Coach said, just like fight adversity because uh, adversity going ahead. Like last game, it's just how you going to bounce back. And I think we uh, last two practices, it was great. We came out like just ready to go, uh, ready for today. How are you guys able to break down Michigan's defense in the second round? For anyone, Mark? I think just sticking up to our principles. Uh, coaching them preach our defensive principles day in and day out. So just sticking to it. Uh, what you say about offense? Our offense? No, our, de you our, said our defense. No, our defense coach. Oh, de I'm sorry. I better be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, just staying solid. Just, just doing what we know to do. Uh, and also, uh, coach was saying make them uncomfortable because that's what they want. They want uh, comfortable. So they run so many sets. They run so many sets and counters to their sets. If you let them start the offense so early in the clock, you're guarding multiple actions. Now, you have to, it requires multiple efforts, and we had that, but if I just think the cumulative effect of on the ball pressure, our pressing, you know, we did cause 19 turnovers, but the cumulative effect of our ball pressure and making them try to get the, you know, get the ball in, get it up against pressure, I thought Kanye and Aces on ball, the dribblers, Really blew up a lot of ball screens. Didn't get them in their their offense. There's a couple of times they didn't start their play until 16, 15 on the clock. 
I think that's huge. And I just think the cumulative effect of our on-ball pressure throughout, especially the second half, was huge. Ace, to Mike's point, a lot of coaches would not have continued that pressure with a double-digit lead in mm -hmm. the last five minutes. And I thought that was an interesting because it seemed to continue to juice when you were right. sitting on the lead. Mm -hmm. What did you think of that? Uh, I think it's great. Uh, don't, never, don't never let our foot off the gas uh, until the clock says hit zero. So. Through what you were seeing in that sequence, and I think the done run, the done run, there's <laughs> a done run right there. Nah, it was just my teammates finding me. Honestly, just being in the right position, uh, I'm confident in my abilities, knock down shots, and they just found me at the right time. So, All right, we want Marco to be uh, aggressive, so give him that confidence, let it fly. Mm -hmm. I think he can do this all the time. For sure. Yeah, he just uh, he wasn't in that role before, and. As we're moving along, he's getting better and better at it. So he's a very talented scorer. And that last three was a, a heat check. That was a heat check. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> I love it. We want to play with great freedom and the, I like to say the neon green light. And he's really, he's really understanding that without a doubt. Yeah, we don't win without him. Uh, he had 27 against VCU. That was your highest yet. Uh, 25 today. Uh, just because I scored, uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I did have a, a good game. But, no, nah, to your question, no, nah, I don't think this is my best game. Uh, I just, to be honest, I just had, I wasn't tight. Like, coach always tell me, like, don't be tight. Uh, just have joy. And I felt as though I had joy this game. And I just was having fun out there. We just, uh, like I said, the last two practices, we just came out uh, like ready to go. Uh, we practiced hard for the last two days, and it showed today. You guys are good to go. You have five minutes. See you guys. Don't eat my cheesesteak. <laughs> go ahead. Um, Mike, this is a big one for you guys, obviously. You know, you a great crowd back there. You're back to over 500 on the season, two and two overall in the tempo. Do you think this is where the season could turn around? You always hope you always hope a win like this and the excitement of the win can propel you, but you also got to be cautiously optimistic, uh, without a doubt, because we got to we still got to get better. We, uh, you saw the beginning of the game; like there's we, we still have we have too many um, moments where we just you know I'm not gonna say shoot ourselves in the foot. You know we we just have too many moments where it's a it's a bad play, it's it's a miscommunication, letting a guy wide open. Um, we're growing as a team, and I, I'm, uh, to be honest with you, my, what I'm most proud about today is the response from the other night. I mean, we got shellacked, let's call it as it is, and uh, we could have made every excuse and still been bummed out and had that loss beat us twice. And we found, we found something, especially late in the first half and the second half, that, all right, there's some signs of this team that we're capable of doing some things. So, so it doesn't guarantee you're going to win the next game, but let's see if we can build on this. No, I didn't. Uh, you know, I, I no, I didn't think there was hangover. I mean, we we got we had some wide open threes to start the game, and we got to make them. We got to make them. That gives you momentum, and um, that was you know we we're not making enough open threes this year, and I thought we would. I really did. What do you think the guys thought of this place? It's so different. The you and I know about this. These guys don't. You know, they, they know a little bit more about the Garden or the United Center because that's what they, you know, they, they don't watch games in the Palestra or go to games in the Palestra like we did growing up. Uh, so you, you, you try to give them the lesson of everybody that's been, played in here, Kobe and Dr. J and, you know, you got like all the, you, you, you throw names at them. That's, you know, and then I explain to them that when they walk in this, it's one of the oldest basketball arenas in the world. And you're going to get to put a uniform on and play a college basketball game in it. Did and you'll have that for the... Well, when we, yeah, when we came in earlier, like, they're like, yep, 
what is this coach? You know what I mean? I, and Did they walk. Really yeah. So I, I, I don't know who one of them's like, what? This is the palestra. They didn't know. They don't know. And that's the history lesson. And it's the same thing when we went to the garden, like we gave them a little bit of history lesson. And I wish we could grab an hour and a half and walk the concourse and show them all those pictures and they would know even more people on there. But now for the, in their basketball life now, that's the bucket list that I played in the palestra. They can tell their kids and their grandkids someday we beat Michigan in the palestra when I was at Penn State. That's pretty cool. Mike, uh, Penn State's had the good fortune to play some of these uh, break games down here at the palestra. How important is it to keep that going moving forward? Yeah, I think it's really important. You know, one thing when I took the job, I think I used the term out of the box thinking uh, with our program. I want to do that. Like, you know, in our first year, we got in the garden. We, uh, we want to always play down here in the Philly area if we can. Uh, you know, I, I think there's other places in Pennsylvania in the Middle Atlantic region that I think we can play and go to our fans. I think it's a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I want to play in Hershey, you know, Lehigh Valley. You know, I'll, I'll go play out in Pittsburgh. It, but there's, you know, playing and getting to New York and, uh, you know, maybe even down to D.C. I think is, is really cool. We, we have the biggest al uh, alumni network in the world in that's really cool. Let's use that. Let's let's think out of the box and how can we go to them? And I think that's really important. And one thing that I want to do everywhere we go on the road, we want to invite our our alumni and meet our alumni and get them on on our wagon, the basketball wagon. You know, it, it takes time and and it doesn't happen overnight. But this is an example of what could be really cool because of our alumni network. I did meet here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, you know, no, without a doubt. I mean, it was it was a home game. It was a sold out home game, and everybody was in white. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't we? I mean, I don't think they'll let us do it ten times, but if we can do it more than once, I'm all for it. But over break, I think is a great time to do it. Gets our guys off campus. Um, I just think it's really cool for our program and to show off Penn State and Penn State basketball. Three more, Mike. Nate, Dave. Mike, uh, I, I thought in the first half you got a lot of the disruption that you want to get from your defense if they just didn't turn it into points because they right, correct. Yeah. the ocean. So was this close to what you – was this as close as, as happened this year? Yes. To what you want to be defensive? This was the cumulative effect of our defense today. And we got turnovers. We pressed them. We caused some problems. We didn't get points out of it. Um, but – if we stuck with it, I felt cumulative effect is going to take hold, and it did. And then in the, you saw in the last 10 minutes of the game, we had some turnovers that led to baskets. Yeah. And I also think they took a couple quick shots at the end of the press. Uh, they made a three. You know, sometimes you want them to make their first three at the end of the press early in the game. Uh, we call, and, then, and then they start missing them. We call that a, a, a shooting turnover. We rebounded a clean rebound and go, and I thought we had a couple of them as well. I thought Kanye and Ace's disruption on the ball, even when we didn't get steals, was huge impact in the game. Yeah, we've been really working on rebounding and, and, and eating the basketball is, is the term, because we've, got, we've gotten killed on the glass this year. And, uh, you know, we, we got out rebounded, but I thought we got some big rebounds today and some loose balls. So we have to have an overachieving spirit this year. I don't think we always have that. Uh, and we have to get loose balls. We've got to come up with a one-on-one -on -one weak side rebound. We got to get a, a point guard in there and rip a rebound and, and draw a foul, you know, stuff like that. And we got a couple of that those today, and we got on the floor, created some jump balls, and we have to. Ha that's that overachieving mentality we have to have. That's who we are, um, because there's times we're just we're a little bit outmanned, and uh, so how do you overcome that? Hopefully, the press getting deflections, getting turnovers, but then coming up with a 50-50 ball that you don't think we can get or we didn't get earlier in the year. I think that's huge. You mentioned that this was your first time coaching the game here at the Flesh. Yeah. What would you say was your overall experience about it? And you want to try to make this a yearly event, play some of the other Philly teams down here? Yeah, absolutely. I'll play anybody anywhere. Uh, if it's in the Palestra, even better. Uh, that's cool. So 
uh, yeah, that that would it would be great. Uh, I think you know being down this way for so many reasons. Um, players on the team, recruiting, our fans are here. Uh, but look, the I don't know if you know this, but my grandfather played at Villanova like late twenties, early thirties. He played in the Palestra. I got to coach Penn State in my home state and beat Michigan in the Palestra. Come on, man, pretty cool. And. Uh, so that that's the fun of that stuff. So yeah, um, but uh, it's it's one game. It's a cool game. We got to win. I got to coach a team in the Palestra. A pretty cool day. I'm gonna get on the bus and cheesesteak back to the snow. I'm all I'm all for that. I can't wait to see the snow. I haven't seen it in a while. Thanks, Thanks guys. Be safe going home.